the stable attempted to intimidate the other referee into handing over the key, the referee smartly threw <laughs> yeah, the key into the crowd. Damn. The referee then pointed at the dog. <laughs> I forgot about this, bro. He launched that shit. <laughs> he said, fuck you. <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 WWE referees that had 100,000 intelligence against wrestlers. It's always good when the referees can spot the BS. They know some shenanigans are going on, and they're able to, to spot it and call it out, man. So we're going to check out some of these moments, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. Link to the original video will be down below. It's by WrestleMania. And uh, let's get right into this one. One criticism that's often directed but to modern WWE <laughs> is in relation to the lackluster way they present their referees. The referees in WWE are often presented as incompetent, and they'll often be oblivious to cheating yep. and villainous shenanigans, even when they are crystal clear. However, from time to time, WWE allows their referees to shine. On rare occasions, WWE will allow their referees to be presented as competent, legitimate Sometimes. officials who know exactly what they're doing and won't fall for any hijinks. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 times <laughs> WWE referees Most of the time they're the fucking wrestlers. just bots. <laughs> That's Most of the time they're just fucking bots, bro. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, the competent referee at WrestleMania 10. Hmm. At WrestleMania 10 featured a classic ladder match between Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. Early on in the match, Ramon would be attacked by HBK's bodyguard Diesel and due to the match being no DQ, the referee had no official power to DQ HBK. However, when seeing Diesel attack Ramon, Earl Hebner decided to berate HBK in the middle of the ring before informing Diesel that he needed to go back to the locker room. The best thing about this was that it presented mm. Hebner as a somewhat menacing referee, and even the seven foot tall Diesel wasn't going to go against his ruling. <laughs> there was also an indication that Hebner wanted to keep the ladder match as fair as humanly possible, and ejecting Diesel early on in this match was his way of doing this. Number nine, it works. throwing the key away <laughs> money in the bank 2010. Well, the Nexus stable was running riot in 2010, and WWE referees at the 2010 Money in the Bank pay per view decided to assert their authority. <laughs> John Cena was wrestling Sheamus in a steel cage match. Naturally, the Nexus attempted to get involved. When Nexus member Michael Tarver was about to cut the lock off the cage door, one referee would grab the bolt cutter and head to the backstage area. <laughs> And when the stable attempted to intimidate the other referee into handing over the key, the referee smartly threw the key into the crowd. <laughs> the referee then pointed at the dog. <laughs> I forgot about this, bro. He launched that shit. <laughs> and he said, fuck you. <laughs> I would have threw that key and ran. WWE logo on his shirt indicating that if they are harmed in any way, then the punishment would be severe. Number eight, knowing the character <laughs> of Royal Rumble 2002. The 2002 <laughs> that was Rumble funny, opened man. up with an intercontinental title match between William Regal and Edge. Regal at this point in time had incorporated brass knuckles into his persona and he was using the dreaded weapon to win the majority of his matches. Before his match with Edge began, referee Nick Patrick would search the entire ringside area <laughs> to ensure that Regal hadn't hidden away any brass knuckles. There they were. When Regal was in the ring, Patrick would search Regal's body and eventually find Regal's weapon of choice stashed away in his trunks. <laughs> it was a great the... comedic spot, but it made it look like the referees actually watched and studied the wrestlers themselves, which is a fantastic touch. <laughs> the... Number That's seven, this. twin magic backfires on Raw. And one of the common traits of the Bella Twins was yeah, the use of twin magic. Out. During the matches, the two would often rotate without the referee knowing to obtain an unfair advantage. Mm -hmm. This was criticized by fans as it was evident that Brie and Nikki looked completely different. So it was kind of ridiculous that WWE yeah. referees couldn't tell them apart. Nevertheless, in the April 2013 episode of Raw, a referee finally saw sense and Wait realized what the duo <laughs> were doing. During a match between Brie Bella and Naomi, Twin Magic would strike, allowing Brie to get the win. However, after Naomi, their partner Cameron informed the referee of what happened, the referee re-examined the situation. It was then declared that Brie had lost via DQ. It was fantastic to see a referee <laughs> finally get a, a little bit of common sense. Number six, calling right. for the Miz's antics at Extreme Rules 2017. 
One of the top matches on the Extreme Rules card saw The Miz take on Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental title. The match had an added stipulation that stated that if Ambrose was DQ'd, he would lose his title. And Miz naturally decided to try and get Ambrose disqualified throughout the match. And one of the mm -hmm. ways he did this was by getting his wife and manager Maurice to slap him. In theory, this should have been an immediate DQ, but the referee mm -hmm. was smart enough to realize what Miz was doing, and he ejected the rings <laughs> from ringside, allowing the match. I love, I love when he, when the referee hit that. <laughs> that was, come on, that was smart, man. <laughs> to continue. Number five, El Hebna gets revenge on Raw. Oh, yeah. One of the common storylines integrated throughout uh -huh. the Attitude Era was El Hebner's hey, hatred. Hey, El Hebner didn't play that shit. You keep your damn hands off of me. <laughs> For Triple H. Yeah. Triple H, along with the McMahon family, had made Hebner's life hell. Fact. But eventually, in April of 2000, he had enough. <laughs> During a title showdown on Raw between Triple H and Hebner, the game was once again overstepping the mark. Yep, he pushed him. Hebner wasn't going to stand He pushed him back. <laughs> when Jericho performed a lion salt, Hebner would One, perform two, a quick three mm -hmm. count, costing the game the WWE title. This highlighted that whilst wrestlers think they can push referees around, it can come back to bite them One, when two, they least expect three, yep. it. <laughs> and though this decision was eventually reversed, it was an iconic moment and one of the standout moments of the entire Attitude Era. Number four, I they are that. in WWE on SmackDown. The rivalry in 2007 between The Undertaker and Batista exceeded everyone's expectations. Mm -hmm. The two had some absolute wars and their chemistry in the ring can never be denied. One of the more underrated matches was a steel cage encounter of May of 2007. And the finish saw both men climb over the top I of the cage I remember watching this time. too. The referees were lost for a second and were unsure as to what to do. That's when they remember that WWE was a show with multiple cameras Camera and they angles, could yep. just rewatch the footage from the finish of the match. This was a tremendous addition to the finish of the match as it made the referees look competent and for once it was a case of WWE not treating their fans like total idiots. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, instances of this nature are rare and yeah. WWE replaying footage to decide important decisions has rarely been used they on don't, TV. They don't really which use is a much. massive shame as it's a great tool that can be used incredibly effectively. Yeah. Number three, outsmarting Triple H at WrestleMania 21. By the time the WWE arrived at WrestleMania 21, Triple H had become accustomed to cheating in his matches. Of course. The game would do whatever it took to retain his <laughs> oh, world title. And his character I still don't like what they did to Goldberg, bro. That shit, oh. <laughs> to this day, that just, they, they killed uh, a lot of his momentum prominently revolved about being obsessed with being world champion. However, when Triple H attempted to get himself DQ'd in the main event of WrestleMania 21, the referee was having none of it. During his match with Batista, the game would attempt to hit the animal with a steel chair, but the referee Mike Kyoda intercepted and grabbed the chair yep. from the hands <laughs> of the game. This was a brilliant move on the part of the referee. <laughs> <Give me that. laughs> By taking the chair away from Triple H, the referee showed that under no circumstances was he going to see the main event of WrestleMania come to an end via a lousy DQ. Number two, Eddie Guerrero is caught in the act on SmackDown. <laughs> the late great Eddie Guerrero made a career out of lying, cheating, yep. and stealing, but it didn't always work. In 2004, in an episode of SmackDown, Guerrero Recipes was Eddie, teaming man. with Booker T to take on the duo of Rob Van Dam and Rey Mysterio. During the final stages of the match, Guerrero replaced one of the tag title belts on Mysterio that pretend like Mysterio just struck him with the gold. <laughs> but this backfired when referee Nick Patrick turned around to see Guerrero mocking Mysterio. The match would then continue with Mysterio eventually getting the win for his team. This was one of the rare occasions where Guerrero had been caught minute. cheating and it was a great way to plant the seeds for Guerrero's eventual heel turn to become a few short months after this mm -hmm. notable match. And number one, the referee uses all of his senses at WrestleMania 39. The main event of night two of WrestleMania 39 saw Roman Reigns take on Cody Rhodes for the undisputed uh, WWE. I wish he would have used a little bit more when he saw fucking uh, Solo come back out there again. <laughs> Universal title. The majority of the first portion of the match was built around Bloodline member Solo Sokoa interfering from the uh -huh. outside. But that was until the referee caught wind of what was happening. One of the spots in the match saw Sokoa use Rhodes' weight belt as a weapon, and although the referee didn't directly see the belt being used, the sound it made was too loud to ignore. Yeah. Sokoa would then be ejected from ringside to the delight of the fans. This was a smart presentation of the referee, as if the referee simply ignored it, it would have been ridiculous. The sound of the belt hitting Rose was deafening, and the referee was insanely close Fantastic to the Fantastic match, though. So it was without question the right move. 
WWE referees traditionally receive a ton of criticism as they're usually oblivious to everything that's going around them. But this was the one time where WWE remembered that the referees have ears. But there you have it, folks. But he didn't have eyes because Solo came right back out there and attacked Cody again. <laughs> so it did. Did it really matter? <laughs> but no, nah, man, this was a great video. I love it when the referees actually use some fucking common sense and be like, wait a minute. What, what's going on here? I wish they would incorporate replays a little bit more. I mean, <laughs> it's 2023. And, you know, any major sporting company is going to have multiple camera angles and replays, you know, throughout the show. So I wish they would incorporate that a little bit more in certain storylines and angles and matches and feuds. I think that would give it a little bit of realism to, you know, what's going on in the ring or whatnot. So that way it's like, you know you can see certain things but i get why they don't do that because if you have your heel cheat and you can just have the instant replay look at it then they can just be like well he cheated so we reverse the match you know what i'm saying so i get why they don't really do it much but it would be cool if they did it in certain storylines depending on how what they're trying what story they're trying to tell so comment down below let me know your favorite referee of all time man let me know who you think of when you think of iconic matches and them calling uh iconic matches or even being in part of a little bit of the storyline like earl uh, earl hebner would uh, would be sometimes and let me know your favorite referee of all time but i appreciate all the love and support you guys show on the channel road to 150k now i'm still getting to speed the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see you on the next one peace